Hey, what's up, y'all? Daniel from D7Cs. Um, this is the latest knife to come into my collection. No introductions needed. We all know uh, Oz Machine Company, Roosevelt. But this particular configuration has been hands down my favorite one. This is the one that I've been looking for. So let's open her up. This is in that mag milled pattern. Loving it. So there you go. Um, yeah, it, it was born this year, 2024. Awesome. So, um, this is my third Rosie. Uh, the first one I had was the Frag Radial. Uh, I let that one go. And then I got a, a Radial, uh, which I let that one go. And then um, I got this Mag Milt. Now, during that time, honestly, I really wanted a Mag Milt for the longest time. Out of all the different like patterns, to me, the Mag Milt really connected with me the most uh particularly this kind of a finish because even in the mag milled configuration there's like the stone wash version there's like a blue bronze uh version there's like a blue purple you know so there's different variations of the mag milled but for me this kind of a shinier kind of a sheen finished mag mill was exactly what i was looking for and thankfully i saw one pop up in the oz facebook group now a quick tip, if you're looking to get one of these, um, right now, it looks like Oz Machine Company, they do like a first come, first serve type of a lottery system. And so, uh, of course, you know, that's going to be a hit and miss, you know. Um, uh, but if you do want to get one, definitely check out the Knife Swap Reddit page uh, or the Facebook group, the Oz Machine Facebook group. And I do see these regularly um, come up on the secondary around the eight hundred dollar mark, uh, eight to nine hundred dollars depending on the configuration. Now the XLs they're gonna be a little bit more. I do see them kind of stabilize at about a thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollar type uh, kind of a mark. Um, but man, overall. There is a reason why the Rosie is just so highly regarded. It is honestly one of the best EDC knives that I've uh, used and for good reason. There's just a lot of great, great things about this knife. Um, first of all, it's a very compact knife. It's not a big knife. You know, the form factor on this is very, very EDC friendly. Um, let's just do some size dimensions. Um, let me bring out, give me a second here. Uh, all right two classics all right this is the koenig Arius. this is the large version non-flipper boom <laughs> definitely smaller than the Arius. and of course the large sabenza 21 um also smaller uh than you know the large sabenza um let me bring out uh something okay this is the mini fsti um smaller than that so it's it's not a big knife all right um and then last yeah so there you go that's the skiff fugitive so again it's a very it has a very compact form uh even in the pocket is very um pocket friendly it has a very kind of a rectangular kind of profile silhouette um it's very you know it's fairly thin in the hand um it's a blocky shape right it's not this the handles are not contoured right the only contouring really is that awesome pocket clip, as you can see right there. But gosh, this is light. Uh, I'll say this is probably somewhere of like three ounces. I, I don't have a scale, so I don't weigh my knives. But I'll say just feeling in hand, probably like three ounces or so. Um, oh, God, that action, though. There is no action quite like a rosy action. It is so fluid, so smooth, so addictive. Um, it is not like drop shutty, right? Um, like so something like the mini FSDI is definitely drop shutty. I don't need to shake it. It just boom, comes and goes right in. This one, I do need to shake it just a little bit. Just to give it a little uh, switch and then boom. The detent on these guys are just so dialed in. The only other detent that I would say is comparable uh, would probably be like a, a Utsler neutralizer that I had. Uh, man, Utsler nice, man. He, Cody, does amazing detents. Like, the best in the industry. But I will say the Rosie is probably is, is up there too. Um, you know, you guys are already all aware he uses that double detent ball system. 
and it's just something about a rosy is just so so incredible um performance wise is one of the best uh edcs out there it is so slicey very tall flat grind very thin blade stock magnet cut i think it's uh the heat treat uh hrc is like 63 64 so just very optimal um has a really nice belly and then really nice tip um you know has this kind of this you know small swedge up at top the jimping is just really well done it's not overly aggressive but it still has enough like tactile kind of that feeling to know that your thumb is locked in this is the most comfortable grip i could kind of back it out a little bit and still have four fingers i do have like medium-sized hands so i could do that but this is going to be the ideal grip right here you know using that that integrated finger choil boom you're you're locked in all day good to go not going anywhere um of course there's multiple ways of opening this knife of course the, my favorite one is that spidey flick right so comfortable boom all day long um you could slow roll it out like so um let's see if i could thumb flick it out ah yeah i have a harder time with the thumb flick yeah some people could even like do a like a uh a, a, what do you call it like a front flipper kind of a action i can't do that i'm not a good front flipper um at all so that's not gonna happen but let's see what happens if you're a lefty right i'm not a lefty but i actually this knife is pretty, I will say, I can manipulate this with my, my left hand, All right? So as you can see, even if I put some pressure on that lock bar, oops, yeah, it might, there you go, boom. So I think the only issue you may have as a lefty is like that, that pocket clip, of course, but in terms of manipulating this knife, um, look at that, dang, I'm literally, this is my weak side and I could flick it open as easily as my dominant right hand. So there you go. Now let's take a look at this mag mill. Look at that. This is absolutely a stunner. Um, I love how he kind of left those. I don't know if those are like machining marks. I think that's probably what it is, right? But I love how he left it in there. It actually gives this knife a lot more character uh, versus if he knocked that out or if he kind of smoothed it out. Because to me, yeah, I just love that. It kind of looks like waves a little bit um you can see it on this side as well i love this kind of this finish it's like this kind of a a a, a light dark wash kind of a sheen finish um absolutely gorgeous man this knife is honestly my this is the most handsome rosie out of all the rosies out there in my opinion you know what i'm saying very simple uh not a lot of craziness going on of course you got the the uh the updated pocket clip where it's contoured now let me say this I, i'm a fan of their original pocket clip design which is flat it's like a flat pocket clip this does have a little bit more contour um in the hand it does feel a little bit more comfortable uh, than their original pocket clip design but i think the reason why i really like the og clip is because i think uh it just visually it looks more uh more what do you call it that it should be there right the lines of this knife is very like flat right as you can see it's a very flat profile so um i think having a contour pocket clip kind of throws off like the silhouette of this knife just visually but i totally understand why oz went with a contoured clip because i think it definitely is a, it is an upgrade and it does feel a little bit more comfortable in the hand. Uh, but visually, I think a flat pocket clip looks a little bit better. But neither here nor there because both clips work very well in keeping this knife in the pocket. It has really good retention. Um, other than that, I don't know what else I could say that's already been said a million times over. You know, this blade is absolutely centered. Um, slicing machine. Oh, I'll say this. The only thing, uh, I wish they had a, a, a captive pivot system, you know, so you do need to have two tools to hold one side while you unscrew the other. I've, I've taken these knives apart and it honestly is very easy. Uh, it, it doesn't take a lot of finger gymnastics, like, uh, like a hinder XM18, you know, it's very easy to take apart and put back together. Uh, but yeah, it is a free spinning pivot. Now, let me make a let me make predictions for the future. This is I'm gonna make two predictions. All right, first of all, I think 
uh, what's going to happen. And, and let me add a caveat. I'm not an a industry insider. I do not know uh, Oz Machine Company. Uh, I don't know the maker. I don't know any of these folks. But just by looking at the knife industry, looking at the trends and what folks are saying in the knife community, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he started to come out with a captive pivot system. And even more cool, uh, I think he's going to come out with a large. So as you guys know, this is the original Rosie. It's a fairly small knife, like I said. And then he came out with the XL, which is a, a ginormous knife. I've actually handled that knife in person. And it's an amazing, amazing knife. Uh, but it is a, it's a big boy. Very big boy. Uh, what I'm thinking is probably within another year or two, he's going to come out with a, a middle one, maybe like a Roosevelt large. And it's going to be right in the Goldilocks right there. And I think that thing is going to sell like hotcakes uh, a, on a cold Alaskan day. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. I think it's going to be more popular than the OG and the XL uh, if he comes out with something like that. So that's my predictions. Mark my words. Okay, I made this prediction in 2024. I'm thinking in 2025 or 26, we might see a large. We might see a large, and I would not be surprised. All right, so there you go. Um, absolutely love, love this knife. This knife is just ugh, EDC perfection, you know. Cool. With that being said, uh, I will see you guys later. Take care now.